Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the installment sales method, which is a revenue recognition method. Now, when do we use the installment sales method? It's when there's a high risk of not receiving cash from the buyer. So if we make a sale and there's no chance of receiving the cash, we really cannot recognize the profit. Therefore, we're going to we're going to utilize the installment sales method or there's no reasonable basis for estimating the incollectible amount. OK, we make the sale. But we don't know how much of that will be incollectible. There's this uncertainty, whether we receive the cash and how much, or if, or we cannot estimate how much incollectibles. Under those circumstances, you are allowed to use the installment sales method. It's very similar, the installment sales method, think about the cash method. It's very similar to the cash method because you're gonna recognize the, pro the profit in proportion of cash collected. As installment payments are made, you would recognize the profit. This is the installment sales method. Now, how would you use what measure? For example, if you received, you know, $100,000 in cash, how much of that is profit? Well, you're going to have to use the gross profit percentage from the sale. So first you compute the gross profit percentage, and I hope you know how to do so. Gross profit percentage is sales minus cost of goods sold will give us gross profit. And Let's assume sales is $100, cost of goods sold is 60, gross profit is 40. To find the gross profit percentage, you will take 40 divided by 100, and we would know that the gross profit on the sale is 40%. So, going back to the 100,000, if I received 100,000 in cash from that sale, which is, you know, let's assume it's a different number because sales is only $100, but let's assume the gross profit is 40%. I would recognize 40% of profit for that particular period from this cash collection. So the installment sales method, you wait for the cash. Once you receive the cash, part of that cash is profit, is recognized as profit. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to do what? Look at an example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So let's take a look at this example. In year one, we had sales for this particular company of 1.4 million, cost of sales 900,000. The gross profit is half a million. Now the gross profit percentage is 35.71, which is 500,000 divided by 1.4 million. Now bear in mind, this is rounding. So if you increase it, it's, or you decrease it, you know, 7.413. Okay, the cash collected for that particular year from the client, from the customer, is 400,000. Okay, now let's journalize the entry for year one for this customer. Well, we debit account receivable for 1.4 million, credit installment sales for 1.4 million for the same amount. This is for year one. Then we debit cost of goods sold, which is cost of goods sold for this particular company for this particular year for the transaction is 900,000 credit inventory 900,000 now looking at the looking at the income statement you would say well if i reported 1.4 of sales minus 900,000 of cost i have half a million in profit well if i'm using the installment sales method i cannot have a million in profit unless i received the full amount in cash so how much cash did i receive i received only from this client four hundred thousand well if i received four hundred thousand then i have to do something about this half a million it cannot be reported as half a million how much profit will i need to report i will need to report four hundred thousand times this percentage rounding 0.3571 okay now this is the amount i need to report as profit simply put if this is the amount i need to report as profit and now i'm reporting half a million so i have to deduct something here that i'm going to deferring so what how much am i going to defer well here's what's going to happen i am going to defer what's not what is not what is not applicable what's not applicable i still have 
a million dollar in account receivable remember my receivable started at 1.4 million that was my total account receivable then I received 400,000 minus 400,000 what's left in my receivable is a million now what I need to do I need to multiply this million by my percentage that I cannot collect that I have not received yet so part of that million include 0.3571 Again, rounding 0.357143. That's not that's not collected yet. It means I have to back it out out of the half a million, which is the amount of 357,143. Now I have to back out. Let me use a different color. I have to back out 357,143 from half a million, and what's left is the profit, which is it's going to be. It's going to be 400,000 times 0 0.3571. It's going to end up to be that number. But let me show you the journal entries. From the journal entry perspective, I will debit an account called the deferred gross profit for the amount I need to defer. How did I came up with this amount? 1 million, which is the remaining receivable, times the gross profit percentage. In this amount, it's going to be like an expense. And it was an expense, as I showed you right now. It, it went up here and it reduced your gross profit. Then I'm going to credit another deferred gross profit. This one goes on the balance sheet. And this is an AR adjustment. It's a contra account receivable. It means I'm going to be receiving 1 million of receivable minus this 357,143 because that's, 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 that is a, a deferred profit. Now let me show you what would the income statement would look like. So if we go to the income statement here, it's going to look something like this. Let me go to the income statement and show you what the income statement would look like. We'll go here and we'll see 1.4 million of sales, 900 of cost, gross profit, half a million. Then we will back out 357. This is less. This is less. So this is backing out 357, 143. So the only remaining gross profit is 142. 857 which is half a million minus that which is again how do I come up with this number if I take 400,000 times 0.35 what's the percentage 3571 400,000 times 3571 let's see how if the rounding is going to work or not 400,000 times 0.3571 it is 142,840 142.57 again rounding okay it doesn't really matter but it's rounding so that's the only profit I can recognize for this year because that's the only cash I received for this year now another way to do this another way you might see it in a different textbook in a different CPA company some a CPA prep company something like this they will debit receivable this is an alternative method 1.4 million for the sale they will credit inventory 900,000 for the cost of the inventory. Then they will credit the third gross profit immediately for half a million. So they'll put the gross, the third gross profit. Then they receive the cash. Then they back out what they need to back out. So from the half a million, they will back out the 142,857 by debiting the third gross profit and crediting profit from the third profit. They turn it into a profit. So that's an alternative way. You might see it this way. That's fine. Let's take a look at year two for this company. In year two, they had sales of 1.35, uh, cost of sales 934,000, gross profit is 416. The gross profit percentage for year two is 30.81. Again, if you want to, just want to let you know, this could be rounding, just I rounded it to 30.81, which is gross profit divided by sales. For year two, I collected from year one 400, 600,000. This, this 600,000 is from the account receivable of year one. And from year two, I collected 340,000 from the sale. Now, you want to keep those collection, cash collection separately. Why? Because you are dealing with a different gross profit. The cash collected for year one will use 35.71 gross profit, 7143. The cash collected in year two will use a different gross profit. Let's take a look at journal entries for year two. The journal entry should be straightforward. They should be straightforward. Debit account receivable 1.1 million 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, Let me reduce this a little bit. Credit sales 1 million 350. Debit cost 4934. Credit inventory. Now the cash collected, it's going to be two cash collected. In total 940. The cash collected from year one is 600,000. 
and the cash collected from year two is 340. So now, how much profit do I recognize? Well, it's going to be 600,000 times year one gross profit, 300,000 times year two gross profit. This is how much, how much it's going to be. And we have two different gross profit. Now, again, what do I need to do? I, I will need to back out. I will need to the, the back out the gross profit I need to back out from year two. The gross profit in year two was I sold. Let's start from receivable. Let me show you how we compute how much do I need to back out. Because right now for year two, right now, if I don't back out anything in year two, it would look something like this. 416 in profit. If I don't back out anything, this is what it looks like. And this is incorrect because sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. But that gross profit is incorrect. The only amount of cash I received for year two is 340. Therefore, the only profit I can recognize from year two sales is 340 times 30.81%. Therefore, whatever that number here, this is the profit I need to recognize. So I need to only keep from the 416 the profit that I find here. So how do I do so? I will take my let me go back here my sales which is 1,350,000 minus the cash that I received what's left times 0.3 which is let me do it let me do it step by step so I'm going to take 1,350,000 which is my account receivable minus 340 and this should be 1,010,000 if my math is right it should be 1,010,000 now I'm going to multiply this amount by 30.81 and this is the amount I need to back out back out from the 416 and it happens to be 311 230. So let's take a look at the income statement. We have sales 1,350, cost of sales 934. The gross profit right now is 416. Well, that 416 cannot stay because I did not receive the full amount in cash. Therefore, I have to back out 311 230 and I showed you how that I came up with 311 230 here, which is the account receivable times the gross profit percentage for year two. Therefore, 416 minus 311, 230, it's going to give me the gross profit I'm going to recognize in this year, which is what basically it amounts to is the amount of cash I received uh, for year two. Year two, I received 340. And year two, I received 340 times the gross profit percentage for year two. Then for year one, then I'm going to add the gross profit I'm going to recognize from year one. From year two, I received 600,000 from year one. This is year one receivable. This is the year one I received 600 from year one. And the gross profit for year one was 0 0.3571. So this amount times 0 0.3571. Well, well let, me do, let me do the, sorry, let me do the uh, percentage properly because that's not the correct percentage. Times 0 0.3571. And that's going to give me 214, 285. And then the profit I would be recognizing for this year is those two numbers together, which is 319. For the prior year, my profit is only 142,857. So this is the profit I would recognize for year one. This is the profit I recognize for year two. Notice in year two, some cash is collected for year two and some cash is collected from year one. They use two different percentages. So this is how you would rec this is how you would solve a problem using the installment method. The installment method is similar to the cash method. It means you only re recognize the profit as you do what? Receive the cash. As you receive the cash, you would apply the gross profit percentage. At the same time, any account, any account receivable that's not collected yet, you're going to have to create a deferred, deferred profit for that account and make sure the profit is is back, backed out out of account receivable as a deferred gross profit. I hope this is helpful for, for explaining the installment sales method. The installment sales method also is used in your tax course, so you want to make sure you're comfortable with it. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, work MCQs, look at additional information that's going to help you with the installment sales method. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.